Well, it's a snowy, cold day today, and this is a video I've been wanting to make for some time, but I've just been so busy that to sit down and try to do this has been difficult, but since it's cold and snowy outside and I'm not going to do a whole lot of anything out there, um, I decided today would be the day. So put the video on pause, grab yourself a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and enjoy. I would appreciate it if you watch it to the end because at any time you may hear a tip that comes off the top of my head from remembering because I don't sit down and do this with a piece of paper or something and read from it. I do it on the cuff at the top of my head. But I wanted to talk today about depression era cooking and the depression in general. Now, most of us already have recipes that came from the depression era our great grandmother passed them down to her daughter which would be our grandmother who passed them down to her daughter which would end up being our mother and those recipes have lived in our family and they came from the great depression my grandmother lived during the depression and I still remember some of the things that she cooked. And like she told me, some of those things are not worth repeating. They're not even worth making. They tasted horrifying, but they filled the belly. And those recipes vary from state to state because depending on where you live and what you could get your hands on, depended on your particular area of depression cooking. But go back if you don't know or you never asked your grandmother or you think maybe those recipes didn't make it, start asking. Ask aunts who are much older. You know, what, did, what were some of the things you cooked? Now, my grandmother made potato soup. Now, potato soup varies from person to person. You got people that even put cream in it. My grandmother never did. You could forget her using cream for something like that because it was cream was used for butter. And so her potato soup was simply that, potatoes. If she was lucky enough to get herself on a small piece of meat that wasn't enough to go around, she might throw it in the potatoes. But that was basically it, potatoes. Potato pancakes is another thing that came from that time. Um... Today, our potato pancakes are far fancier than back then. Um, another thing my grandmother did, there was no such thing as, you know, a baked potato loaded down with butter and sour cream. She would boil her potatoes in water, whether it was a red potato or a russet potato, and she would cut it open and put baking grease over it and salt and pepper, and that was it. My mother did that, I remember. And it did not taste bad. As kids, we liked it. I never ate a baked potato until I was much older and moved away from home. Now, in talking to my grandmother and realizing that my mother followed one principle that my grandmother did during the Depression and continued to do the same thing even after the Depression, because in general, my grandmother ate the same way even after the Depression. Most of her meat was wild caught hunted. She continued with that. And, and talking to my grandmother and my mother, when the recession hit and how expensive food was, and realizing that my mother, at the time we were young, made, I think it was either $1.15 or two fifteen an hour, I can't remember which, how could she afford a house payment, a car payment, and feeding all five of us? And she said, stop and think. I don't buy half the stuff that you buy. And I said, what do you mean? She goes, when did you ever eat a bowl of cereal? Or when did you ever have cookies? Or when did you ever have potato chips or Cheetos or Fritos or even soda? You know, Coca-Cola. She said, when did you ever have any of those kind of things? How often did you even have a hot dog? When did you ever go out and eat at McDonald's or any fast food place? Because growing up as kids, we never did. And I remember going to visiting my grandmother's house, and it was always the same 
thing she ate. Her meat might change depending on what she caught, but it was always the same. And it was always the same at my mother's house. All my life that I grew up, breakfast was always the same. During the week, it was, you know, maybe oatmeal. And it would be just a bowl of oatmeal with no milk, a teaspoon, we were only allowed one teaspoon of sugar and a pat of butter. That was it. Or grits. Now, on the weekends or days where there was more time because breakfast was not considered to be this humongous meal during the week it was just enough to tide us over until lunch and so it was simple now on the weekends it might be fried potatoes my mother never made biscuits okay folks she always bought canned it would be canned biscuits and maybe some poor man's gravy and uh, scrambled eggs we ate a little better on the weekends but during the week no during the week it was occasionally we had scrambled eggs for breakfast occasionally and occasionally we'd have a canned biscuit the most we had for sweets we were allowed to have jelly and butter on our biscuits and that was it but most of the time it was a choice between grits or oatmeal now if you all you had to buy to feed your kids and a lot of people are in school their kids are and they're fed at school so i've never really understand why the grocery bill is so high because we never ate at school we ate at home we even ran, ran home we didn't take buses we ran home at lunchtime to get something dinner was always the same thing and i i, I thought about this really i mean i really did when I said to myself, well, geez, I can get a huge container of oatmeal for $2 or something. And that would feed me and my family all week. And a container of grits for a couple of bucks. So I said, if I wanted to feed my family for the entire week for breakfast, it would be $4. Four, maybe five. And then, of course, the weekends, a dozen of eggs, you know, a dollar, let's say a dollar. And a bag of potatoes, a couple of bucks. And then you make the poor man's gravy from leftover bacon grease or sausage or whatever, which is a little bit of flour, salt, and pepper. And, of course, my mother used canned biscuits. Sometimes we even had grits with the fried potatoes, the gravy, the biscuits, and the scrambled eggs. Because those were our biggest days to eat on the weekends. Because it was, you know, family time, relaxed time. We didn't have to, you know, necessarily get up and run to school. Because... When I got old enough, I did all the cooking. So it was up to me to get up and make the oatmeal or the grits. We never had cereal, and we were only allowed a cup of milk. We were not allowed to sit down and drink all the milk and drown it in cereal that we wanted or even to put it on our oatmeal. I didn't even realize that people put milk and oatmeal together until I was much older. Never knew what a hamburger at a fast food place tasted like until I was 20 something and I can tell you it was a McDonald's I went to and I spent the entire day afterwards in the restroom I don't care I don't eat out so much at fast foods because it doesn't agree with my stomach it just doesn't we didn't have candy we weren't allowed cookies or any of that kind of stuff our dinner was the same it was white beans cornbread and a green, some sort of green, whether it was broccoli, turnip greens, mustard greens, or spinach, we had greens. And cornbread, I, I may have said cornbread already, but that was it. Once or twice during the week, we might have meat, which would be meatloaf or fried chicken. We did not have meat every day. It was beans, and if we complained we were hungry, my mother's answer was, there's more cornbread in the kitchen if you want it. And I remember saying, no, thanks, I don't want any. And she said, then you ain't that hungry. Now, none of us were overweight. We were not lethargic. And we were not sick. We did fine. And to this day, there's not a vegetable that I have tasted yet that I didn't like. I like beets, radishes. 
cabbage. I like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, artichokes. I like all vegetables. And that comes from my mother. Now, did we have moments what we considered special? I remember as I got older, my mother was working at a place. And on Friday, she would buy a package of Oscar Mayer hot dogs. And she would buy a one liter bottle of soda and split it between the five of us. And she would buy a small package of potato chips. And we were allowed just a couple of chips a piece. We weren't allowed to sit down and pour gobs of potato chips on our plate. And we were allowed a hot dog. We thought that we had died and gone to heaven. Because for us, that was unheard of. We didn't eat things like that. We never had anything like that. And so we thought that was just, I mean, we were jumping for joy. I remember me and my brothers and stuff, we just could not believe we were actually going to have a hot dog. And so we have our children kind of spoiled today. Because, you know, they can go out of McDonald's and go through the drive through and get anything they want. Us, it wasn't that way. Nor was it that way during the Depression. Now, my grandmother was a far superior cook than my mother because my mother hated to cook. But my mother kept the same principles that she had learned from her mother on how to cook inexpensively. And it was by having the same thing every single day. Because when you stop and think about it, two, like, let's say mustard greens, two packages, and I see them all the time where I live for 89 cents, 79 cents. I've seen them as well as 49 cents. Well, two packages, because my mother would buy two bunches of them, would feed the five of us. Well, let's say they're a dollar each. You're looking at 10 bucks to feed a family vegetables all, all week. And... Beans, a one pound bag is a dollar, white beans. And so uh, I've seen them as low as 89 cents, but I've seen them as high as a dollar. Now, two pounds of those, you can cook them and put them in the refrigerator. Even if it took three pounds, you're looking at three dollars. And you can put them in the refrigerator, cook them all at once. That's what we did. I, I only made us white beans once. They went in a big container with a lid on them, and every day we would just scoop some out and reheat them. And then all I did was cook the greens. Sometimes my mom would say, today would you make some fried chicken? And other time it might be make a meatloaf during the week. We only ate meat like twice a week, and that was it. And we had cornbread every single day, and if any cornbread was left over, it was served the next day, or my mother or my dad would take a piece of it with them, and that's what their lunch was. With cornbread and some leftover white beans. They would heat it at work or take it in a thermos bottle. And so, when you go back to basic, simple cooking with nothing but something like that, it's very easy to be able to get by. Because you're not spending 150 to $200 a week on groceries you're spending maybe 30 bucks. It's hard to get your kids used to that, but that's how they lived. There was no such thing as deli ham because deli processed like that didn't exist in the Depression. They just didn't. I remember even my grandmother, she was older, she never made bread and I asked her about that. And she goes, are you kidding? To make bread, it would have took them forever because it took days because they didn't have yeast. And it's a complicated process. I still use yeast as long as I can get my hands on it. Although I know how to make bread without it, I do not look forward to having to do something like that. But if I had to, I know how. But my grandmother brought up a good point. What do you want bread for? To make a sandwich. A sandwich out of what? There, there was no processed hot dogs where she lived. There was no ham or uh, turkey breast, you know, sliced pretty where you could come home quick and make a sandwich. They didn't make roasted chicken like you walk in and see today. 
where you might maybe could make a roasted chicken sandwich or something. And so I said, well, okay, but what about a fried egg? Why would I want to go through the headache of making bread for a fried egg sandwich, you say, when I can put the egg on a biscuit? And I said, well, what about toast with jelly and butter? Well, that's what a biscuit's for. So you see, there was totally different mindset and a totally different way of cooking than we do today. They didn't have grocery stores that they could go into and get foods from all four corners of the earth. It was whatever they grew. And each area, you have to understand. Okay, black eyed peas do very well in the south. They don't do as great in desert areas because black eyed peas can handle warmer weather, but they need also the humidity. So if you're looking to grow a crop that would feed your family all winter long, that ain't going to happen in the desert. And so you see, different things grow better in different areas. Dandelions. My grandmother talked about how they made coffee from dandelion. Well, dandelion roots. But there's no dandelions that grow around my area. My mother told me stories about how they used to go and catch eel. I've never eaten eel. And I can tell you, I think my mother was, um, it, it affected her because she, she wasn't, she was young at the recession and she, I mean the depression. She doesn't remember when she was tiny, but she did remember as she got older and people suffered for 10 years after the depression or more. Some, it was more than that. And so it affected her, and my mother would not even eat a chicken raised on a farm um, or an egg that was raised on a farm. Yet she grew up eating that, but she wanted no part of it. I've never seen my mother eat eel. I don't know what it tastes like. I've never bought it. I have no clue. But she said they used to catch it. I remember a story of her telling me that when they lived in the house, there was four of them in the same bed. They were young. They woke up and knew there was a snake in the bed. And it was a rattlesnake. And she said they, they were scared. And I said, I could see why. I'd be petrified. And I said, did any of you get bit? And she, and she said, no. And I said, well, thank goodness. I said, how'd you get rid of the snake? She goes, oh, we ate it for dinner. I said, you ate it? She goes, yeah, that's what we were worried about. We was afraid it was going to get away. And could you imagine being a child so worried, not that the snake was going to bite you, but that the snake was going to get away from you because that was going to be your dinner. And that's the kind of pressure or life that they lived under. 